Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to the North Meadow. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. I'm actually out taking my morning walk this morning, so I'm just filming on my phone instead of my big camera. But I just had to share this view with you because it just absolutely took my breath away this morning. Look at the fog in the low-lying part of the meadow there. It's so beautiful. <music> hard to be in a bad mood with that kind of view, isn't it? It's so incredibly gorgeous. I'm going to bring you down a little bit closer so that you can see it. It's also very frosty this morning. Just the sparkles would show up on the camera a little bit more. But there's frost all over these fields and it's sparkling like little crystals all over. I've been trying to get a walk-in in the mornings just to kind of get my body moving this time of year and moving into winter. I don't get as much exercise as I do during the spring and the summer. So I have to be a little bit more deliberate about making sure I get some body movement in. So I'm just out, like I said, at the end of our property on the north side of our property. And I'm just about to head up and take a quick stroll through the forest and then back down to the house again to get breakfast going. Ooh, it's chilly though, oh my goodness. Oakley! Oakley likes to come out for walks in the morning too. Oakley, come here, buddy. Come say hi to everybody. It's a good boy. Can you come for a walk with mama? So I am just kind of planning my day today. Um, it's kind of fortunate because I made chicken paprikash for dinner last night, but we actually ended up going out. <laughs> Look at that cutie. So I do need to get some potatoes peeled up for that though, for the mashed potatoes, because we like having it on top of mashed potatoes. Whew, my hand's cold. I forgot to bring my gloves this morning. So I was planning on walking up through the forest, but it's actually really shady and even colder up there than it is down here. And plus, this field's just looking so spectacular. So I think we'll just walk back through that. Not a shabby way to start the day. One of the things that I've been experiencing lately inside myself is this feeling of just perpetual motion. Like life just goes, the older you get, the faster life goes and you've probably heard that before because everybody says it because it's really true life just goes faster and faster and faster and i personally find in my own life that it just feels like um it just doesn't stop like it's just constant go 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 and i am a person who really likes being busy and likes being on the go all the time but but one of the kind of downsides of that kind of personality is that sometimes you forget to just stop and appreciate the beautiful moments in life. So this person I was talking to a couple of weeks ago suggested that I set a timer for three times a day for two minutes. And that for that two minutes, I just spend some time sitting still and just looking at nature, just, just staring at it just for two minutes. I did that the first time a, about a week ago. I was actually looking out at this part of the meadow out of my kitchen window. So you would think that with beauty like this around me all the time that I would take it in. But I realized that when I did that, that I don't actually stop and appreciate what's around me very often. I'm just kind of go, 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 go. And so I've been trying to do that a lot more, which is partly why I'm taking my time with this walk this morning is just to take a breath and enjoy the beauty that surrounds me and actually try to take it in and to feel gratitude and appreciation in my heart about it. 
So just taking a couple of minutes to stop and appreciate multiple times a day um, <laughs> the beauty of nature around me has really helped with my mental health and helped me to just take a minute <laughs> and appreciate it and have some gratitude in my heart. That little dog down there, so that's Oakley. And he is, I think he's almost nine months old or so. And he has just become the most fabulous boy. Oakley, where are you going, buddy? Great Pyrenees are very, very independent. So he'll come out in the field with me, but he doesn't really walk with me. He just walks around. He'll go off into the forest up over here and check things out. Definitely not like a lab or some other kind of family type dog. They're much more independent, which is actually one of the things I love about them. It's still so beautiful out here. It's a little bit later in the morning now, but the sun is shining and it's lovely. So we are going to head down to the garden. I have decided to plant my garlic and my Egyptian walking onions, which one of you sent me. Thank you so much. I am very excited. I've been wanting to plant these for a while, but I always forget to order them for some reason. Our little china asters are looking all cheerful. Last thing to be blooming in the garden. I'm also going to get some boxes and we're going to box up whatever onions are cured and ready to go up to the house. Hmm, where to plant my garlic? I think we'll plant it down in that row down there. But first, let's go into the greenhouse, open it up because I'm sure it's going to be pretty warm in there. Yep, it is pretty toasty in here. So let's open up the vents one up on that side one up on that side and the plastic on my ceiling is coming down and our onions are nice and dry for the most part don't really have any green left on any of these ones so that's awesome in the video where i was talking about stringing up onions a couple of people mentioned when I was showing how to hang these that they couldn't see what I meant when I said to twist this. So I just wanted to quickly show you again. So you take your two strings here and just twist them a little bit. So there's a V there. Take your onion, the stem of it, wrap it around once, give it a push down, and then you're going to twist it again like so and then do the same thing but this time do it on the other side of the string and then you keep doing that until oh that's heavy until they're all strung up like so my preference is actually just to store them in a box i just find it is a lot tidier so that's what i'm going to be doing that's what we'll do today is get all of the rest of these onions put into um, boxes and then brought up in the house because it is starting to get quite cold at night Right now, I am going to take this off because it is warm. I have long johns on too that I'm probably gonna end up having to take off, but I am going to get this container here. And hopefully, I was hoping my garden scissors were actually down here. And they are because I couldn't find them up at the house. And we are going to make some tags because I have one, two, three. I have eight different varieties of garlic here and I got these from Raysa Creek Farms here in British Columbia. And I'll share all the varieties with you once we go out to the garden. But I do wanna make sure that I have them labeled. I am rather notorious for not labeling and then not remembering where anything is in my garden. <laughs> so I am going to make tags and I'm just using a plastic yogurt container, making some strips and then using this waxed china marker on them to write the names of all of these garlic. So we'll get this done first. And I haven't decided where I'm going to put my walking onions 
yet. Um, it's, it gets its name from the way that it walks across the garden. Instead of flowers, this plant produces top sets, a cluster of bulbils at the top of the stalk where the flower and the seeds would normally be. The stalks eventually flop over if they're not harvested and replant themselves, thus beginning their walk across the ground. It's thought to be originally native to India or Pakistan and later introduced to Europe by the Romans. Also sometimes called tree onions or top set onions, these vigorous and trouble free plants are hardy to zone, th zone three through 10 and we're in zone three B, so that's awesome. They die back to look scruffy over the winter, but very early in the spring, new green shoots em emerge from the brownish bases. Like other onions, the leaves are hollow. The red and purple bulbs are only slightly enlarged from the stem at about an inch long. By late spring and into early summer, heavy spikes are produced that grow two feet tall on which the bulbils are born. These start as tiny green, but eventually grow larger to, with reddish brown skins. Okay, so I am going to have to be a little bit more deliberate about where I plant these because they are going to come back year after year and will likely spread if I don't stay on top of them, which I probably won't. <laughs> so we're gonna have to pick a good spot for those. I am transitioning back to a no-till garden again. So you'll remember back in the spring, I decided to till my garden, which I don't regret doing, but in learning more about soil health, I feel like I want to go back to having a no-till garden. So that's the, one of the reasons why we're prepping our garden the way that we are this year. Okay, let me see, do I have enough of these here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. Um, so we're actually keeping the configuration of the garden the way that I had it this year. I really liked that. It was beautiful and functional because the pathways were nice and wide to fit the wheelbarrow and the wagon down. Um, so we have those beds mostly prepped at this point. I just need to get the edges of them cut in, but I'm gonna wait till spring to do that, to really worry too much about that. And then um, I have to add all the top compost as well. Okay, so we've got our little tags here. I'll write the names of all of these on Inchelium. Georgia Crystal, Creme, De La Rasa, or Rasa, Music, Purple Russian. Purple Russian is kind of my standard. I've been growing them for the last three years now, I think. They grow really well here. It's always fun to try some new ones. This one's Rocky Red. Susan Delafield, which are massive. I grew these not last year, but the year before, and they were huge. Oh, so excited to go hang out in the garden for a little bit. And Talon. We'll make our Egyptian walking onion one, two, although I'm sure I'll remember where those are. Why not? Okay, let's put all these back in here. So when I got this box in the mail a couple of weeks ago, I opened it up and then opened up all these bags like so, and just left them in, in my closet until I was ready to plant them. If you leave them in the box all closed up, they could start molding if there's any moisture in them. So the bulbs are all broken up into their separate cloves now. When they come, when you order them, it will be in the bulb. So then you just split them apart to plant them. All right, let's go do some gardening, shall we? We still have a couple of flowers blooming over here. These straw flowers are a fabulous flower for the Northern Garden because they bloomed quite early and they're still blooming now in October. Just beautiful. And same with the snapdragons. We still are getting some color from the snapdragons. The poor marigolds, they do not like frost at all. Okay, so this, whoops, is going to be our garden 
row for next year. So I'm just gonna grab a rake and give it a rake out. What a beautiful day. Don't know if you can hear the wind blowing through the trees over there, but it sounds so peaceful. I wonder if we'll have any poppies come up because this is where the carrots and the poppies were. I'm sure there's some seeds dropped in here. So as you can see, I don't get too finicky about straight lines in my garden. <laughs> my garden is a wild place and I love it. Okie dokie, let's put Miss Susan up here. Miss Susan didn't get split apart. So we will Split these apart. And I like to plant my garlic about four to six inches apart or so. Little bumblebee. I think I'm actually going to plant these varieties in squares rather than rows. I'm so grateful for such a beautiful day because I have definitely been feeling a bit down this last week and being able to be out in the garden like this feels wonderful. Okay, little bumblebee, off you go. Go on, go on. I don't have anything for you. All right, Miss Susan, let's put you there. Next up, creme de la resa. So I'm doing three rows about six inches apart and then each bulb about four inches apart in each row. And you probably have seen people plant them in all different kinds of ways. This is just the way that it works for me. So I'm going to be covering these with a little bit of compost. And then on top of that, they will have leaf mulch from all the leaves coming off the trees. And then they'll sit like that until the spring. And then when they start, poking their heads out in early spring. I usually pull back the mulch a little bit and then give them another bit of compost. Georgia Crystal. All covered up. I am just going to put a probably, I don't know, two inch layer of compost on top of that. And then some leaf mulch, like I said, on top of that. Probably get that to that a little bit later today. But for now, I am going to box up and trim up all our onions. So 
So all I'm gonna do is trim off some roots and our stem, like so. I think that's it for that variety. And that is one variety of these little ones here that I cannot for the life of me remember what they are. Still got some green in that one, but I'm just gonna put this on the top of the box and it'll dry inside. All these big red ones, these are all called Red Wing. And these ones, this is the first time I've grown these, but they are supposed to be a really good storage onion. And they sure grew well. I'll be growing them again for sure. Again, a little bit of green left on that one. Hardly any though. I definitely planted a lot of <laughs> the red wings. We have more than enough of these ones, that's for sure. These big red ones could definitely use a little bit more time. Because they're still a little bit damp there. These are the Walla Wallas. And we got some green in there too. So I'm just gonna check the weather forecast and see if we can get away with leaving these out here for a little bit longer. Cause they really could use another, another chunk of time. At least another week would be ideal. Let's see, oh yay, okay. So we have really nice temperatures and at night, the lowest it gets is five degrees Celsius. So we can get away with leaving these out here. That's fantastic. We definitely have a bit more moisture in these stems than I want, but even still, they still need another week. And thankfully we're gonna get it. So we'll just leave these in here for now and come back again in a week and get them brought up. There was one more thing I wanted to do in the garden. Let's see if I can find two pots. And we have two. We are going to try to save these little lavender I have in here. So this little lavender, we're gonna pull out of the ground, trying to get as many of the roots as we can. And we're gonna pop it into this pot and see if we can't overwinter it inside. Lavender does not overwinter in our climate. So, oh, it smells good. I did this with my rosemary the other day and it's doing quite well indoors. And this little tiny one over here. have any tips for overwintering lavender indoors, do let me know. Because this will be a first. Now it'll be interesting to see what survives in this raised bed over the winter. I think I might take a little bit of this lemon balm out as well and see if we cannot grow that indoors for a little while yet. Wow, there's a serious root system in there. Also, smells amazing. Uh, 
There we go. I think I'm going to need a bigger pot than that one. Okay, I've decided I'm also going to grab a couple of my parsley because they also look fabulous. There we go. And then in behind you over here, we have a couple of beautiful parsley. So I'm going to grab out this little guy here. If the farmer's almanac is correct, we're supposed to have a very snowy but mild winter this year. So if that's the case, maybe some of these herbs will make it through and come back. And this one here has a little oregano tucked in at the bottom. So I think we'll grab this one too. Look at these parsley roots. They're huge. Inside and put them in the window. I do have a grow light that I'll hang above these just because our days are starting to get very short and they're gonna need a little bit more light. And we do have one last thing that we need to harvest out of the garden before the garden is completely done. That is all of this beautiful kale. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So the plan for all of the kale, and I have another bunch over here as well, is to chop it up and freeze dry it, and then we'll add it to soup and smoothies and things like that in the winter time. And then that's gonna be it for the garden. I got called away from the garden yesterday morning and I wasn't able to get the walking onions planted. So I did want to come out today and get those in the ground. Otherwise I know I am going to forget. And look at this, it is another absolutely beautiful day here. I did get the area all prepped up for the walking onions. So I just raked everything out, pulled out the extra weeds that were in there that we hadn't got taken out from when we were clearing the beds, just like I did with the garlic, put a couple of inches of compost on that. And now we're gonna get them planted. I am going to give these a little bit of space because I want them to be able to have space to be able to fall over and plant again. And I'm just going to cover these up and pat them down with a little bit of soil. And like I said, this already has compost on it, so we're gonna take some leaf mulch and cover them over with some leaf mulch. And I'll pull this up in the spring, but this will hopefully help to protect these little onions from our really, really cold temperatures. We can get down to negative 40 degrees Celsius here which is very cold, as you can imagine. If you haven't experienced it before, it is bitter, bitter cold. It's actually dangerous. I'm gonna have to go get some more leaf mulch. I didn't bring enough over. Um, it is the kind of cold where it's dangerous to be outside for more than a short period of time. Okay, I'm just gonna go grab some more leaf mulch. One sec. bunch of sticks in here. There, all tucked in. And then I just wanted to quickly show you what we ended up doing yesterday afternoon when we came out to the garden. And that was to get the compost all put on here. So again, a couple of um, inches of that manure compost and then covered it up with a nice thick layer of leaf mulch. This is just a couple of inches of leaf mulch. I will be pulling back most of this mulch once the garlic starts coming up in the springtime, but I'll tuck it in around 
where each garlic is coming up to help keep the weeds down as the garlic is growing. So the reason that I picked this area over here to put the walking onions is because I have my perennial herb beds in around the little greenhouse here. And because these walking onions are hopefully going to be perennial here, I just decided to keep all the perennial stuff in one location here in the garden. And then right over here, I also have the Shasta daisies and the snapdragons that I'm planning on cutting right down to the ground and covering with a whole bunch of mulch and seeing if I can't overwinter them as well. That would be amazing if I could. The snapdragons that are over here in the raised bed though, I don't think that they will make it through just because the raised beds are obviously gonna freeze solid, but I am gonna cut them down and mulch them anyway and see. I absolutely love, love, love snapdragons. This is the first time year that I've grown them and I did start them from seed back in February, I think but they are very frost hardy. So we've had several hard frosts and both the daisies and the snapdragons have made it through. And then we also had frost in the early spring after I'd put them out in the garden and it didn't even phase them. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.